It is a heartbreaking statistic. Nearly 700,000 children are abused each year in the United States. And to raise awareness to keep our young ones safe, April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month. Child psychologist Dr. Cheryl Ziegler joins us now to talk a little bit about this. And Cheryl, what, what, how do we define child abuse and who typically abuses a child? So we define child abuse as the intentional harming of any child under the age of 18. And unfortunately, who usually abuses children are people who are close to them, loved ones, people in authority, people in their family. When you think about that, that's a bigger circle than you, than you realize in some cases. What about signs and symptoms of child abuse? We all need to be aware and see what we can do. We do, and I think we need to really also know what, what forms of child abuse there are. So um, we might all think of something different. So there's, there's physical, there's emotional, there's um, sexual, there's neglect, and there's medical. So there's several different forms that we think about abuse occurring. And when we're thinking about what are the signs in any of those cases, there are things like um, withdrawing from activities that a child normally is interested in, avoiding wanting to go home, sometimes poor hygiene, increased days that they're missing from school, uh, of course, a sadness, defiance, runaway behavior. So any of those behaviors that seem uncharacteristic can be the red flags that something is going on with that child. I know we've talked so much about this during the pandemic with um, schools not in session in person. That's been the big concern because so often it is a teacher or somebody in the school system, especially some of those younger children that notices something's wrong. Absolutely, it's been a it's been a huge concern. The calls to child protection agencies were significantly down during the pandemic because it is normally um, something that a teacher may observe at school, something like hygiene or not having food or maybe having bruises on them, um, those kinds of things. So. We want to be, I think, as full community members, whether you're a parent or you're just a trusted neighbor or friend or an aunt um, of a child, that you're really thinking about what makes you somebody that a child may actually go to or open up to. And when we think about those characteristics, you really want to think about um, as an adult being somebody who listens to children. So when they're talking that you're present, that you're really focusing on them because that will make them feel more comfortable. And also teaching children things like online safety awareness, that's important. Teaching kids to trust their gut is something that is so incredibly important, right? If they feel uncomfortable around somebody, teach them that, teach them ways to respectfully, but also with setting good boundaries say, you know, I'm not comfortable with that. Um, so there's a lot of things I think that we can do to support children when they're even outside of school. Yeah, they really have a good gut instinct and they need to know to listen to that. Um, we all need to be involved in this and realize that maybe they're not going to tell us the first time, but we, we have to be present, as you said. Dr. Ziegler, such an important conversation. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon.